Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today at this uh, ITMPI event. I appreciate taking the time to uh, talk about some estimation topics. It's, uh, estimation is something I'm fairly passionate about. If you've heard any of my other webinars or seen me speak uh, at, a, at a conference or just talk to me in general about the, the subject, it is something that um, somehow I have become extremely passionate about. And it's something that I believe is um, given short shrift in a lot of organizations. It's uh, something that everybody thinks they can do and do well and, and, and just sort of go with that without really giving it too much thought. And within my own organization and other organizations I've consulted for, that, that seems to be the case. And one of the, one of the problems I think we have is this focus on estimation accuracy. Uh, so I wanted to you know, bring that topic up to the forefront of the conversation today, and think about what that means in the in in the term in the context of software development projects. Um, what do we mean by accuracy? Maybe talk about how we could rethink some software estimation objectives that can be more constructive for us as estimators, as project managers, as uh, whatever our role is, and then to provide a framework that can maybe help organizations advance or, or mature their estimation processes over time. So that's our agenda today. Let's talk a little bit about for estimation accuracy and what we mean by that. And, and typically, when you hear about, well, how good was your estimate, you think about it uh, in terms of accuracy. And, and our standard definition of accuracy is the condition or quality of being correct, not having an error or defect, pre precision or exactness. So it's how close was our original estimate, how close was the estimate that we put forward to the actual result. Seems pretty straightforward. So how do we typically measure that? Um, there's a couple different ways that are similar in nature, and, and the numbers look the same, but you kind of read them differently. So the first way we often think about it is, is, is in terms of variance, our estimation variance. And a simple formula for that is our actual effort minus our estimated effort divided by our estimated effort. So in this example, if our estimated effort was 750 hours, we ended up getting the job done in 805 hours run it through the math, our effort variance is 7.3% over our estimate. And the same concept would apply to cost and schedule. So fairly, fairly straightforward there. The other metric that is often used is a very specific accuracy metric. How accurate were we? And it's somewhat similar in nature. The accuracy formula is actual effort divided by estimated effort resulting in a similar number, but we read it differently. And estimation accuracy, the above example, would be 107.3%, which means that we were 7.3% over. A perfectly accurate estimate would be 100%. If we nailed, if our estimate nailed what we ended up spending on the project right on, we're 100% accurate. So like I said, this seems fairly straightforward. But a thought, what does it really mean to be active for a development project? I mean, projects come in and say, well, we, were, we only had a 2.3% cost variance on this. And I look at the numbers, and it just doesn't make sense because they had so many changes. They, they had to go back for more money. I mean, it's, so it didn't make sense to me. So I, I started to drill into what does this mean about the realities in the context of the realities of most of our software development projects. So one of the first on which estimate do you base calculations? The reality is that software development projects are typically quite dynamic in nature. Things change. Requirements and scope changes, technical approach change in the middle of delivery if something's not working out right. Staffing can change if we lose some of our key development staff or a project manager or something like that. 
that good process is in place, then when changes occur, you should be reevaluating your estimate, reestimating the effort, cost, and schedule to make sure you can still complete the project as planned. Now, if you're not doing this, then you're already introducing significant risk to your delivery. But if this, then which estimate do you base your accuracy calculations on? Is it the first estimate that you did for the project when it started? Or the estimate that you did right before you delivered the finished product? Because that gives us a very different picture of how accurate things are. And certainly this one has some value. That first one also has some values. But when you lay those numbers out for management, for senior leaders to make a decision or to use in future estimation, as which one are you using? The aspect to think about is how much did the project change from inception to delivery? And these are the changes that we, you know, I, I, I previously mentioned. So what we end up delivering typically doesn't resemble what we estimated in the first place. I'll go through an example of that in a minute. But if that's the case, how do we know if it was really accurate? Or better yet, how can it be possible to be accurate by our definition of what accuracy really is? To me, you're, if you're always sh shooting for a moving target, accuracy is very difficult to really get your, your arms around. So let's look at an example just outside of, of the world of, of software development. So if we got uh, at the beginning of a project, we estimated, say, a log cabin based on the information and requirements had we had at that time. But through changes in scope and requirements throughout the project, it revealed that what the client really needed was a beachfront vacation home, which is what got delivered. So the question then is, was our first estimate accurate based on the information we had at the time? Maybe, but what good is that? when you end up where you end up, spending a lot more and, and delivering something that didn't look like what was being asked for in the first place. Decent estimate accurate, the one that we completed right before we finished painting the bedrooms was probably the most accurate, but again, useful is that, that laid in the development cycle. If we already know that we're gonna spend a million dollars more than we initially estimated, then we've, when we've got 100000 left to spend and we re-estimate that and we're really close to that extra million dollars, how useful is that at that point in time? Can we make informed decisions at that time? The answer is probably not. Our approach to estimation incorporated potential risks early on and enabled effective project control as those things changed. So we have our initial concept of it. Estimating that cabin, we put together an estimate that incorporates some of the potential risks and changes, anticipating some of those changes to begin with. And what we end up delivering looks a little more similar to that initial estimate. So we're estimating as we experience change to make sure our project can still be delivered on time within budget and absorb those changes that are coming in. But it some of those things from the beginning so perhaps we don't have to worry too much about changing our overall targets for effort, cost, and schedule to deliver this thing. It's the opportunity to take one of two very effective approaches. Since our initial estimate incorporated the change to begin with, or that those risks that we discussed and identified, perhaps we don't need to reset our targets. And that's often the most frustrating things people have with IT project is that you're constantly going back for more money. I've, was talking with one client, and um, he said that uh, you know their uh, their they were a development shop, and their clients were you know upset because the initial estimate came in at four hundred thousand dollars, and the most recent estimate was one point two million. And they're like, why is that? Why was it three times as much? 